And when I ring the bell, that's when you... I'm sorry, I'm forgetting your name, dear. Leela. Leela. That's when you... bring in the tea. Yes, ma'am. Very good. It's so important that everything today be perfect for Aunt Betsy. Especially you, my dear girl. Oh, dear. What? I should have taken you shopping. It's just it's too bare, David. She looks great. Uh, yeah, too great. Um, t that lipstick. Oh, no, no, no. David, your handkerchief, please. Oh, boy. Uh, for today, a, a lot less gloss. Blot it down. Good, good, good. It's very important that you make an excellent first impression. It won't help. Aunt, aunt, whatever, isn't going to give 30 million to someone who's married. Uh, you and River are not married. We designedly stopped you for your own good. Well, you stopped the ceremony. But in our hearts, we married ourselves on Valentine's. Whatever you feel in your heart. Whatever is... you feel in your heart has nothing to do with marriage. You can trust me on that. Oh, no, 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 no. I just thought you might want some company. That trial was a disaster, wasn't it? I wish you hadn't fired Evangeline Williamson and tried to represent you know, yourself. firing that broad was the smartest thing I ever did. <laughs> so, Jamie's spoon comes flying across the room and swoosh lands right in my pocket. <laughs> so I figure, I don't know, maybe I've got uh, an athlete scholar on my hands. <laughs> And then she, uh, well, she, she drugged me. She took my keys and went joyriding. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, RJ. I, I just can't stop wondering what the jury is doing. It's not your problem anymore. He is not your problem anymore. He fired you. Yeah, I know. Hey, <clears throat> give me whatever it takes for a girl to get on with her life. Your call. You want to run a tab? What? Do you want to run a tab? Uh... No. No, I, um... I better watch what I'm doing. Hey, Marcy. Oh, hey! Is the, is the jury still out? Uh, yeah, the jury's still out. Um, uh, Bo and John? They're in there. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Matt. No. Hey. Hey. Is the jury back? No. Call. Matthew's on an overnight, and I'm quietly going nuts. Well, you sure came to the right place. Any word on Haver or Ray? Taking our best shots, but nothing so far. Well, mind if I pitch in? So I can keep my mind occupied instead of trying to figure out why the jury can't make up their mind. Please do. Thank you. Fresh set eyes can only help. Oh. Je what is what's going on? I, I don't believe this. Jessica Buchanan tipped off Stephen Haver that you were onto him. I don't know what they're teaching at that college. This guy's killing women just like her. What are you doing here? I'm looking for a sympathetic ear, I'm afraid. Did you talk to the police? I know you didn't go the other day. Yes. Oh, yes. I'm afraid your suspicions were correct. I think that you're suspect. I'm trying to look at it from the police point of view, but I'm afraid that John... John McBain's becoming unglued. I think he's trying to frame me. Wow. Well, you told me he was going off the deep end, but I... What can I do? Well, I think your uncle is a little more level-headed about all this, so I was hoping you could help me get through to him. Um, could I come in? Of course, sure. Yes. I didn't mess up. Evangeline messed up. Calling Marty to the stand was what? a dumb move. No, no, no. 
no, maybe not. I mean, the jury might very well see that as a very brave thing that she did. Come on, it was generous of her to come and, and speak up for the, for the person who raped her. My concern is Blair. She gave very convincing testimony. And it was very powerful. And I'm a little... <clears throat> I'm a little worried that, uh, as upset as she is right now, she may no longer know what the truth really is. Adriana, marriage is actually something you shouldn't rush into. I don't want to be rude, Blair, but River isn't like your husband. Well, no one is. All I'm saying is that sometimes even true love isn't enough. Well, I'd rather risk my life on that than anything else. <laughs> what is that? A ring. An engagement. Ah. Ring, huh? You two girls, you just have marriage on the brain. Now, would you excuse us? I have to finish talking to Adri Adriana. Come, come, what? come. Dorian. I'll tell you about the ring. You, you, you stole that, didn't you? I did not steal that ring. We're talking about love and marriage oh, here, Blair. love and marriage? You actually expect me to believe that you love anyone other than yourself? Dorian accepted my ring. Dorian loves diamonds. Look, I understand that you're all down on love and marriage oh, this week, etc., etc., et but oh, I think you want to know you something. Love what? Dorian actually got under my skin all those years ago. It's... It's kind of like malaria. The fever just keeps coming back. Oh. And you, of all people, ought to know... Uh, what? Are you okay? I'm... What? Let go of me. I'm fine. Fine. You're engaged. And yet you're telling me that I can't be married? No, my point is that you don't have to be either engaged or married in order to enjoy an admirer. And this simply proves that I'm the last person in the world to stand in the way of true love. Mine is true. It will still be true when you're 18 years old. And as your mother, I will be most happy then to give you my blessing. Even if Aunt Betsy dies and it means giving all that money back? Trust me, $30 million will buy you a very good lawyer. In the meantime, we have to make sure that we make Aunt Betsy very, very happy. What if she asks about my marriage plans? Mm -hmm. I can't lie. You know, at your age, plans are merely dreams. You're under no obligation to mention River, especially since it will have the gravest of consequences for all of us. to get for you all the time. You told me. Oh, right. <laughs> I know how much you like these. I do. And for the first time, I, I don't feel weird about remembering Al and being happy that we're getting closer. Wait, Troy was hypnotized by Haver? Turned him into the perfect suspect. That's how I was able to get him to take hallucinogens day after day. Oh, come on. Troy was just... I mean, he was truly sick. And for the doctor who's supposed to be making him better to do that, I mean, that's just wrong. Not as wrong as killing all those people. Hey, hey. I think I got something here. I've never seen you this quiet before. I'm sorry. Uh, this, this is just so inappropriate. You're a student of mine, and I'm... Is, uh... Detective Vega going to be coming home anytime soon? No, I'm sorry. He's still alive. Seems like a good man. I'm sure he could, uh... I just can't understand how Agent McBain could come up with this vast theory connecting my work to the actual murders. It must be horrible to be accused of crimes like those. More than you know. A smear like this could cost me my entire career. Oh, 
Here, why don't, why don't you relax and take your coat off? I mean, I... look on the bright side. If the police were completely convinced, you'd be arrested, right? They don't have any evidence. That's the thing. They... No evidence? Well, then can't you prove that you're innocent? <sighs> Proving a negative is next to impossible, especially in the court of public opinion. But there is no evidence. See? You drop something with like... How did you get Ray Cummings' ID? Ray wouldn't go anywhere without her ID. And especially not now. My mom has increased security on campus since the music box murders, and you can't get anywhere on campus without one of these. That's why Ray called me from Boston. She's in Boston? John's been looking for her. I put him in touch with her there. She's helping a suicidal friend in the hospital. And she realized that she was missing her ID. She asked me to check her office, and she was very relieved when I found it. I'm airmailing it to her tomorrow. Oh, well, that's... that's nice of you. <laughs> um, you won't tell anybody about this. She'd be very embarrassed. Uh, may I? Yeah, sure, of course. You know, I'm really... I'm glad that you came by, actually. I think... Between us, we can, um, we could really convince, um, my Uncle Bo that, uh, John is completely wrong about this. Look at this. One of the suspects in the White Rose killings in New Jersey was interviewed by a psychiatrist from Wyndham Clinic. You think that was Haber? MacGyver mentioned something about Wyndham, but he was too spacey at the time to tell me what the name meant. You got an address? No, nah, not here. I'll go check it out. You gonna knock off soon? Shouldn't you be in the ER saving lives? Well, I'm on call, but it's been quiet so far. I'm sorry, I, I just, I can't. Okay, well, um, I got tomorrow off, so, uh, I don't know, if I actually get some sleep tonight, maybe we could do something tomorrow? Uh, sorry. Come on, Marcy, they gotta give you a break here sometime. No, it's not that. I, I have this test that I really have got to study for. Mm, it's... Test, yes, that's so much more important than having a social life. I have to keep my scholarship. You no, should not understand. No, I know, I get it, I get it. It's just that with you working here all the time, me at the hospital all the time, I just don't know when we're gonna get a chance to see each other, sweetie. In our dreams. You're joking, right? <laughs> I don't know, what do you think? Hello? It's me. I had to hear your voice. Hey. Some honeymoon, isn't it? Well, I still feel married to you. Well, then come over. Sneak out. I can't. I have to meet Aunt Betsy tonight. I'm not even supposed to mention you. Dorian is a ridiculous money grubber. I know. Sorry. I just don't want anyone to get hurt. And I guess the fact is, she's my mother. You know you're too sweet for your own good, right? What if I tell Aunt Betsy the truth about us? Then she'll cross me off her list and Dorian won't care about us anymore. Look, please don't get on Dorian's bad side right now, okay? She's pretty brutal, even without 30 million reasons to give us hell. Oh, I think Aunt Betsy's here. I may have to go. Aunt Betsy, oh, you look wonderful. I think those doctors are all wrong. <laughs> what are you doing here? Nothing to do with you. Star, why don't, why don't you go find your mom? She wasn't feeling well earlier. No, thanks. I hate my mom. She's throwing my dad in jail. Good for her. It sounds like that's where he belongs. Look, lady, if you want another Star Manning, I think you should just stop it, <clears> dear. <throat> Blair, look who's here. Aunt Betsy. Hello. Um, let me uh, take your wrap, or David will, this and uh, this we... better be worth coming all the way from Ohio again. Oh yes, Ohio is so beautiful in February. Aunt Betsy, it is my great delight and pleasure to introduce you to my daughter. 
Ah, uh, uh, Adriana. It's nice to meet you, Aunt Betsy. We'll see about that. You know, being pregnant and driving from Pine Valley to Lambview isn't really my idea of a good time. Hey, you were the one that told me I couldn't show my face around Pine Valley. So, what's up? I called the lab up in Canada, and the paternity test results on my baby, they're gonna be ready tomorrow. And to come someday. How about, uh, we just go somewhere and get a nice room, and uh, we can figure out the answer to your problem? Mm. I would, but... You won't be around. I need you to fly up there tonight, and still we'll look at those tests. And if it isn't J.R. Chandler's kid? You make it J.R. Chandler's kid. My idea, then yours. <laughs> Mine first. Honey, you do this for me, and I'll make you so incredibly rich. And then after the baby is born, we'll have more fun than we can stand. I can stand a lot. That's how I remember it. So, here's the address. Don't let me down. Yeah? Mr. Kramer, you wanted me to let you know when Aunt Betsy comes to visit. Okay, when? She's here right now, meeting the young girl. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be right there. Damn it. If I lose, I can appeal. If you lose, you have to hire a professional like Evangeline Williamson to handle your appeal. Yeah, she did a great job with my case. Fine, then get another lawyer. But please, first, stop and think about what she had to deal with. You are not an easy client. I'm not an easy brother either, am I? No, you're a very trying brother. But you've come through for me a whole bunch of times. And I don't want to lose you to prison. Please call Evangeline. More tea, Aunt Betsy? Yeah. Leave us, please. Maybe you should, Dorian. You too. Oh, right. <clears throat> and shut the door. Right. <laughs> I must say, I have been puzzled by your sudden appearance in Dorian's life. I was adopted by a very nice family in Puerto Rico. My adoptive parents made sure I got a very good education with the sisters at my convent school. Dorian only told me I was her daughter a little while ago. I suppose you have a father. All I know is he wasn't a very good man. There's no such thing as a good man. I disagree. I think there are many good men. My father just wasn't one of them. He's the reason why Dorian kept me a secret. Your mother changed her mind because she wants my money. I know it's very important to her. Not so much to me. I was once innocent, beautiful like you. You're still beautiful. <laughs> Not so innocent, huh? <laughs> uh -oh. T tell me about your life in Puerto Rico. Things are going very well. Aunt Betsy just laughed. <laughs> trying to pull another fast one on me, huh? Where is she? You know, if you really want to help me, talk to Star. I'm sure she's taking this rough. I know she is. I'm her guardian. Of course I will talk to Star. I mean, if I'm... out of the picture for... A decade or more. I just have to know that my kids aren't growing up thinking I'm some sort of creep. So why don't you 
take some steps to protect your children and make sure that you actually are a part of their future. Hire a lawyer. I don't think I did. Thank you. Time to go, Manny. I'll see you. If it's working, <laughs> we can go. <laughs> <laughs> and abandon your club. A Capricorn doesn't need me. That is what I had a staff for. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've taken care of everything, and I think you've taken care of everything, so let's go. Mm. No, no, no. I didn't hear anything. You didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything, actually. I have to get it. It could be a client. No, 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 it's no. very no. important. My life is important. They are all bad, bad people. Well, they wouldn't need you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't mean, get it. <sighs> Hello? Hey, it's Todd. The difficult one. Oh, right. Can I see you now? Thursday. What about Thursday? Thursday? No, I have classes. Okay, all right. Uh, Sunday night is my next all-nighter. We could get together... We could get together Monday, 5 a.m. for coffee. A.m.? Yes. You call that a date? No. No, I don't. <laughs> this is impossible. <laughs> Thank you, John. Ready for this? Hit me. There was a huge fire at that clinic tonight. Oh, I heard about it in, on the news. Yeah, some storage tanks blew. The fire started at the clinic, and then it spread to the tanks. Uh, burned the whole place down. Arson? The clinic's been closed for a couple of years. Local police and fire figure, uh, Vagrants or vandals. What do we figure? Well, as far as John can tell, there's no connection between Haver and the clinic. So there's no reason to believe that Haver had Ray there? No. It's just, uh, it's another possibility that we have to fool around and check out just because McIver mentioned it. What? I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm so frightened for her. Get out of here. All right. All right? Let's just go and take a break. We'll get some to eat. That sounds good. That sounds great. Hey, Michael, how are you? Hi. Hi. We're gonna uh we're gonna go out for a while, so if John comes back, just tell him we're not gonna be too long, all right? Can I do anything? No. Thanks. Okay. Wow. Wow. What's up with them? Well, they're frustrated that the music box killer is still on the loose, and they have absolutely no clue who the next victim's gonna be. Hey, Jazz? Jazz? I smell coffee in there. Jazz, open up! No, no, Sorry. it's not that. It's not that at all. Um, I'm just interviewing somebody for the banner. Oh. Yeah. Then sexual harassment again, right? No, it's it's not sexual harassment. It's a kind of harassment, though. And my um, subject is a little bit publicity, so I can't invite you in. 
Sorry. Right. Sorry. No. No big deal. Okay. Listen, I heard something spill though. Are you Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're fine. It's just um kind of a heavy subject. Okay. Okay. It's just, um, no, no, when, when I, she I'm heard sorry. Us, I... I just, I, uh, I've just faced all the questions I can handle for one day. And Natalie's John's friend. I, I know you must feel bombarded wherever you go. I can't believe it has come to this. You, you d didn't tell her I was here, did you? No, no, of course not, no. Thank you. I, I just want to be the one to find the time when to tell people about this mess. This is, I understand. it's going to hit. My colleagues and the students like a bombshell. I understand, of course. Thank you. I knew I could count on you. Hey, John. Well, you look terrible. Thank you. Uh, the commissioner and Mrs. Buchanan said that they would be right back. What's up with him? Oh, I wouldn't worry about it. He gets like that when he's working. He, he's chasing a killer around three states. Yeah, like I'm chasing you around two date books. <laughs> I'm really not avoiding you, I promise. Oh, that's the hospital. I can uh, see it. Oh, oh, okay. Um, well, thanks for the daisy. dare you barge in like this? Have you been drinking? You're pitching that girl to Aunt Betsy behind my back. Paul, Aunt Betsy wants an unmarried female Kramer heir. Is she in there? Hey, uh, hey, get, out, get, of my get way. out of here. So help me, we'll call what the police going and have you on out here. Aunt Betsy, these two are keeping you from hearing things that you need to know. Such as? A pack of lies. Such guy as cannot be Adriana trusted, here eloped last week to get married. I guess I'm lucky that my face isn't splashed all over the newspapers yet. Oh, Dr. Haver, by the time that happens, it's too late. I know. What am I going to do? John McBain is so frustrated because he's two steps behind the serial killer, he will do anything he can to close this case. It's OK. We're going to get to my uncle before that happens. I, I'm not even sure if I'm ready to do that now. I... I'll come with you. Yeah. Yeah. Jessica, I can't tell you what your faith means to me. I, uh, I don't have my car. It's in the shop, so I had to take a cab. Would it be all right if we drove up there together? Of course, yes. I'll even let you drive. Okay. All right. All right. me and I, I'm not sure that I'm doing the right thing by coming here but I'm really I'm just having this really bad feeling that the Jessica's in trouble Sweet. Hey. Who are you, disgrace, disgrace. oh I hope we're going back 
back to Longview. I don't want to stay here. Honey, what is what is that all about? Aunt Dorian's having a huge fight about money. Oh. Have you seen my dad? Darling, yes, I did see him. That's why I came. He's fine. His only worry is you. Yeah, well, I'm doing lousy. Oh, stop. I can clear this up. Very absolutely. Absolutely. I have a stay in this office. Silence! One at a time! Adriana, are you married? No, I'm not. She would be, except these two stopped her so she could qualify for your money. Aunt Betsy, may I please explain? Good God! Is that what I think it is? Yes, it is an engagement ring because David and I are engaged. But we did everything that we could to stop Adriana from getting... Adriana from getting married um, because she's 16 years old, because she's so young, so sweet, so virginal, and she was being led astray by a wicked man. Wicked? River. No, Paul. Aunt Betsy, why don't you ask Paul here who was with them trying to encourage Adriana here to get married so he could keep a shot at the big bucks? I was only trying to help out two kids in love. Ah. Uh. I am appalled. I, 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 I thought you abhorred marriage as much as I do. Oh, you. Aunt Betsy, just because I... Enough. Adriana. Are you still planning to marry? Okay, I, uh... Well, first of all, I was not wrong to fire you. You went after Blair. I commanded you not to. Secondly, it was a dumb idea to put Marty Saberk on that stand. We... Where are you going? I can't believe I interrupted a perfectly good... You know what, Todd? You're fired! Wait a minute! I was about to say I was even dumber for representing myself. I dug my own grave. And now I'm facing prison. Jerry's still out. Oh, come You're on. You're not guilty yet. I'm going down. I need to prepare. For what? Prison? For my appeal. I can't just go off to prison knowing I still have another chance. Then you better find yourself a good lawyer. Well, I want you. You don't lose, right? But you can tell me to go to hell when I'm asking you, please. Find a way to help me. Please help me. Adriana. Right now, I have no plans of getting married. You realize if I make you my heir, you must never marry. I understand. I am changing my will. I am making Adriana my beneficiary. Honey, I do want you to stay just overnight, okay? Your dad would like you to smooth things over with your mother. Promise to call when the judge decides. Yes. Vicky, what are you doing here? I just came to check out you Star. You said that I could keep Star overnight. Now, yes. please, please, I'm asking you, you to leave now. No, you can't. Shh, shh. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I hope you two get what you want, and I will pick Star up in the morning. Okay? Thank you. Star, would you... This isn't over. Come, darling. Um, and David, would you, would you uh, help Adriana freshen up the tea? Adriana, you want to grab that? Thank you, oh, sweetheart. Let me get the door. No problem. Ah, uh, good. Bye-bye. Aunt Betsy, I can tell you, you're never going to regret this. Oh, shut up. Anybody would marry a man as venal as that Vickers is an idiot. Well, I'm sorry, David does have his faults, but he has his, some very splendid qualities as well. Name one. Well, he's, um, 
a magnificent, fantastic, superb lover. All right, he's sublime, and uh, of course I shouldn't be discussing this with you since you've uh, never enjoyed the pleasures of sex. Why, well, thank the Lord that I am not a slave to animal appetites. You know, Aunt Betsy, I don't think you'd be thanking the Lord if you ever had experienced it, because I am telling you, you don't need to be an animal to enjoy David intensely. You just feel like one. I accept. I get a free hand in your appeal. No, I still don't want Blair hurt. Oh, so my God. Come on. Look, the trial is over, so Blair's part is done. If you want me, no conditions. All right. Handle it the way you want to handle it. Carte blanche. Hello? Thank you. Your jury has reached a verdict. They took the evening off, but court will reconvene in the morning. Will you be there? 10 a.m. At least the jury made up its collective mind. Yeah, but then we have to wait all night until we find out what the verdict is. Yeah, right. John's back. Is he in there? Well, he was, but then Natalie came in and they both rushed out. I don't like the sound of that. Where'd they go? I don't know. They ran out too fast to tell me. Jazz? No, don't no, get the spare key. That's the security. Slow up. You find anything, don't touch it, all right? Okay. Jess? What's that? Caitlin's driver's license. He was here. The serial killer, he was here. He ever left it on purpose. He wanted me to know. Stay tuned for scenes from the next one. He actually thinks that these murders may be connected to the death of his fiance. Caitlin's driver's license at the loft. That was Harry's message. He's got Jessica. We have to go back to the police station and deal with this. Has the jury reached a unanimous verdict? We have, Your Honor.